Hi everyone! You will be surprised as hell after this video, I promise you. I noticed something that no one else noticed before. I think you've guessed it's about G-Man. At first I wanted to make a video where I would go through two versions of him and try to figure out which one was real. But you know what? While I was researching all the details, I came up with a third completely different version. At first I thought the real G-Man was destroyed in episode 65, but he wasn't. Many of you said that the real G-Man was in episode 47 or 57, and he's actually on an upgrade right now, and the Titans destroyed just a decoy. But that's not true either. Grab your tea and snacks. This video will surprise you for real. Here we go. The first thing one of my Instagram followers showed me was this Skibidi in episode 47. Look at him closely. He looks a lot like the guy who was under the G-Man mask in episode 65, these are the eyebrow-raising devices I told you about in the episode analysis. He's also got some kind of plate over his eyes. He looks very robotic, he doesn't have a cistern, and he has some kind of electronics instead. Also, notice this sign right here. It looks a bit like this scientist sign there, but overall it's different. It's like Dafuk wants us to pay attention to this mutant. Since he appeared in episode 47 and there's a G-Man, so they're two different characters. So this Skibidi doesn't control this G-Man. It turns out that after the explosion, his toilet was destroyed and he was moved to a new one to run the fake G-Man. But was this guy the real G-Man? Let's find out. Originally, G-Man looked like this. He had no lasers or anything like that. He also didn't have a stand on his toilet. But in future versions, he had one. Apparently, he can fly. We see that in episode 17. Also here, he's clearly not moving on the ground. Apparently, he's floating in the air. That's not surprising, since we saw flying Skibidi in episode 5. But then why does he need a jetpack? Okay, we'll leave that question for now. Episode 38 was the first time we saw an improved version of G-Man. His guns were weak then. He got armor and a new toilet. I mean, we thought G-Man was transplanted from one toilet to another. It's very simple. And so they can be transplanted somehow. But it's not true. Pay attention to this rim. It's very big here. And it's almost hidden in episode 47 and in the new versions. So these are different toilets for G-Man, but why? Why would you change the toilet? I think they are different clones. Let's call them the small rimmed clone and the big rimmed clone for now. It turns out no one changed the guns either. Just different clones have different guns. That said, in episode 47, there was also this guy who then went on to run the Skibidi decoy. So there's another version of the G-Man. It turns out that there are a few G-Men, so far we've counted three, and they're all different. That said, we see blood when Titan punches this Jimmy in the face. So the shell is made of real leather, which means they needed a real G-Man's face for it. Where would they have gotten so many G-Men? For that, we should go back to the earliest episodes. Remember we often saw little dancing characters as Easter eggs in these episodes? Let's count how many of them there might have been. Right here in episode 1 and 2, they're just dancing. Maybe it's the same G-Man. But here he's being run over by a toilet, so he must be destroyed or absorbed through the bottom of the toilet, I don't know. So the G-Man from episode 4 is a different clone. But as we remember, everyone who was in that episode turned into a Skibidi Toilets. So this guy is now Skibidi Toilet, okay? In episode 5, we see the G-Man dancing downstairs again. Turns out this is the third one of them. Let's assume this same clone is dancing at the disco in episode 6, okay? But this G-Man in episode 8 already looks strange. I'm sure it's another clone, the fourth of them. We never saw another G-Man in human form after that. Meanwhile, only one of them definitely turned into a normal Skibidi toilet. I think it's him in Episode 7, but enlarged. In the earlier episodes, we saw the regular G-Man toilet, and he was most likely alive and real. That said, he was strong enough to resist flushing. But he was a typical Skibidi toilet. His flush worked, and in theory, he could be destroyed that way. But now look at how this flush works. It's just a decoration. Remember how in the episode analysis I assumed this G-Man was real? I had my reasons, and now I'll remind you of them. This is where the Hypno Gun didn't work on him, so he was a robot? I thought if he was a robot here, he must have always been a robot. No, because I didn't realize what this thing was. I always thought it was a stand, but it's another upside-down toilet. Oh my god, look! That curved thing is just the edge of the toilet, and that's the cistern. How did I not see that before? So every Skibidi toilet that had this thing on it is a puppet being controlled by whoever was in that toilet. That's crazy, but it explains a lot of things. First of all, why this imposter's head is so small compared to the toilet? 
I mean, skibbity scientist, maybe with his team of scientists and engineers doing some crazy experiments where they put one skibbity in another to create this damn G toilet, or rather his clones. Then the only real G-Man toilet was the last time in episode 35. After that, we only saw his clones and we don't know what happened to him. But then you ask me, Iso, so this flying skibidi was just a puppet for someone? That's probably true, but it doesn't matter. Maybe the scientists were just testing laser eyes. That would explain why the first clone was so desperate to protect the infected Titan with his body. I guess a real G-Man wouldn't do that. We can remember the first clone by the heavily sticking toilet. We never saw him again, by the way. Apparently during the next episodes, scientists created a second clone. He was already with improved guns. It is quite possible that this exact same clone we saw in episode 49, and then in 57th 1. Maybe they were different guys, it doesn't matter. But this clone was needed for Titan's defense, so he has strong guns. Look at the damage he was able to do to the cameraman Titan. Now compare that to this. Of course, these lasers are weak, even decorative. So when the G-Man is needed to take damage and possibly get destroyed, the Skibidi send a clone with weak cannons so they don't feel bad about losing them. But when the G-Man's function is to attack and take damage, a strong clone comes to the rescue to attack. It makes sense. At the same time, the real G-Man toilet himself is safe and not risking his life. This is genius again. I'm just shocked by this. Yeah, the Hypno Gun didn't work because it was a robot. And of course the camera woman's dart worked because the shell is made up of skin and muscle. Okay, then what did we see in episode 60? Remember I said it could have been the same G-Man from episode 57. It's just that his guns broke and he had new ones made, and then he met up with the Astro Toilets. But that's bullshit! I didn't notice at all these pieces of armor here that look just like this clone after the fight. Did they replace his four huge cannons but forget to align the armor? Of course not! Everything that happens in Episode 60 is a performance for the Titans and the entire Alliance. They just put on a show in front of them, like the Skibidi are mad at G-Man for giving up the Titan. This was done just to make the Titans believe the next fake betrayal in Episode 65. God, this is so genius that I wouldn't be surprised if Speakerman's Titan is also fake. And the real one generally improves on the base so that without the Parasite he can't function at all anymore. Oh, but I'm getting a little distracted. Alright, what's the bottom line? Skibidi toilets have at least one clone with two old guns, unless they've been replaced on the decoy. They also have another clone with high-powered lasers that's being repaired somewhere in their base. And also, most likely, the very first G-Man toilet is a regular living Skibidi, and he also remained undamaged. We have no idea who's running these clones. Remember I counted at least four G-Men in the early episodes? It all adds up. Three were used for clones, and one became a living Skibidi toilet. I'm certainly not 100% sure that's the case but too many things add up, and I'm really surprised about it. By the way, I don't know if the regular Skibidi toilets know the clones exist, but if they do, we might see a few of them at the same time that would be interesting. That said, it's been a while since we've seen the original G-Man. I'm afraid to imagine how they might have improved him in that time. Maybe he's even increased in size and will turn out to be bigger than Skibidi Scientist. Who knows? Okay, enough theories for today. I look forward to hearing your opinions about it all in the comments. Subscribe to my Instagram. There I post exclusive material and show secrets before the YouTube video comes out. Also, I'm waiting for you on my Discord server. Scan the code or follow the link in the description. You might also enjoy these videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!